What is up, everybody? This is your guy, Cly, and welcome back to Budget Buys. And today, I'm going to be talking about the 60% wired gaming keyboard from Rogue. And I think I should go ahead and start things off by getting one very important piece of information out of the way, and that's the fact that this is a membrane keyboard, not a mechanical keyboard. Of course, even though I'm saying this so early in the video, I know there's going to be at least a few people in the comments section asking what kind of switches this uses, as well as where to get keycap sets for it, despite the fact that interchangeable keycap sets aren't really a thing on membrane boards due to a lack of uniformity in their manufacture. Speaking of manufacture, that's actually one of the more interesting things about this keyboard, because if you watched my previous 60% membrane gaming keyboard review, I talked about how that one was available from quite a few different sellers on Amazon both in the generic version I showed you, as well as companies like Mage Gee, Red Thunder, Blue Finger, HXSJ, and DGG. And despite all of that, I actually found one that has a completely different manufacturer and profile. Of course, this keyboard isn't only available from Rogue, just like the previous one, it is available in its generic form, from quite a few different sellers on Amazon. However, the Rogue version is the only one to have a logo on the spacebar, which is kind of funny because if you put a logo on the spacebar of the other model, apparently that adds about eight or so dollars, whereas this one is actually the cheapest version of this model, with the other sellers generally charging between 16 and $30, though they do include a kind of crappy looking gaming mouse to make up for it. And I know a thing or two about crappy gaming mice. Of course, the Rogue model didn't start off as the cheapest. If I recall correctly, it originally launched on Amazon at about $25, but then eventually coasted down to $20 and finally $15, which is when I picked it up. Now, of course, the price is only one of the reasons why I picked up this keyboard. In fact, I wouldn't even say it's the primary reason, due to the fact that one of the kits that comes with a gaming mouse is only like one or two dollars more expensive than this, depending on whether or not you find it on sale. The main reason I went with the Rogue keyboard is due to the fact that it is being sold by Kraken Keyboards, which is a company that seems to specialize in 60% mechanical keyboards in the $80 to $150 range. They also have a large collection of keycap sets, extra large mouse pads, and even those fancy aviator USB cables, which I'll probably cover in a future video. And based on my research, this isn't one of those instances where a seller on Amazon is just using another company's name. According to Trademarkia, Kraken Keyboards did indeed apply for the Rogue trademark when applied to keyboards, mice, mouse pads, and gaming headsets back in April of this year. And since this keyboard came out shortly thereafter, I'm gonna go ahead and say they got it. The other reason I chose this keyboard is the fact that rogues are an archetype that I tend to favor in pretty much every game I play, be it a video game or tabletop RPG. And that fact probably doesn't surprise anyone who figured out what a Cly Faker is. And with that lengthy explanation and static shot out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the features of this keyboard. You've probably been staring at the front of the box long enough to know that it is rainbow backlit, but over here on the back, you can see that it is a 61 keys gaming keyboard, high quality ABS material, laser keycap with backlight, rainbow backlight, a cable length of 1.45 meters, 15 anti-ghosting keys, US English language, Windows lock function, which really should be on every gaming keyboard out there. It is so useful. A length of 305 plus or minus 0.5 millimeters, a width of 110 plus or minus 0.5 millimeters, a height of 35 plus or minus one millimeter, and a weight of 480 grams plus or minus 10 grams. Now, with this being a wired membrane keyboard, you're not going to be getting much in the way of accessories like a keycap puller or detachable cable in this kit. Instead, you just get the keyboard and the manual, and even then, the manual is just telling you what's available on the function layer, which I might as well jump into. So, when you're holding down the function key, the tilde key becomes escape, each number becomes its respective function, 
and then hyphen and plus become F11 and F12 respectively. And for those of you wondering, yes, Tilda and Grave do work properly, unlike on the Mage Gi MK Mini that I reviewed previously. That one was kind of weird. Continuing onward, hitting W while holding down the function key switches W, A, S, and D to your arrow keys, and they will stay that way until you hold down function and hit W again. Y becomes print screen, U becomes scroll lock, I becomes pause, P becomes the key that cycles between your backlight settings, left bracket slows down your backlight effect, right bracket speeds up your backlight effect, H becomes insert, J becomes home, K becomes page up, colon becomes the key that reduces the brightness of your backlight, the quotation mark increases the brightness of your backlight, N becomes delete, M becomes end, comma becomes page down, and just like the box mentioned, holding down function and hitting the Windows key will lock the Windows key. That way you don't accidentally bring up your start menu in game. And one more thing I wanna mention before I demonstrate the light modes is the fact that on the back here, we have adjustable feet. Something that was sadly missing from the previous 60% membrane gaming keyboard. And here we have the rainbow backlight which is the only color pattern you're going to be getting with this keyboard. Unlike the previous membrane keyboard, which had a light changing effect as well as solid colors. Instead, you just have this fixed pattern, a breathing pattern, as well as the light being off. For both the solid color and the breathing pattern, you have three different brightness settings. And for the breathing pattern, you have three different speeds, ranging from this nice slow transition to one that's pretty dang quick. For the curious, my favorite speed is the slowest setting. Now before I go any further, I might as well prove definitively that the Rogue keyboard is indeed membrane and not mechanical, since no matter how many times I say that throughout this video, somebody down in the comments is going to ask me what kind of switches this thing uses. So here I have the Rogue, here I have a mechanical that I'm going to be reviewing in the hopefully not too distant future, and if you take a listen, they sound very different. Of course, there are multiple kinds of switches, including those that are silent, like black linears and brown tactiles. So let's go ahead and pull a couple of keys. First, the mechanical. There we go. As you can see, it is a blue clicky switch. And over here on the Rogue, yeah. sorry for the shaky cam, the keycaps on membrane keyboards don't exactly come off easily. But as you can see, there is a little rubber dome in there because this is a membrane keyboard. But membrane or not, I might as well let you hear what this keyboard sounds like. So jump cut. Of course, the selection of light modes isn't the only difference between these two models of 60% membrane gaming keyboards. Now, of course, there is the obvious difference in the shape of the enter key. There are also things like the fact that the previous keyboard is actually a bit thicker than the Rogue keyboard, and I'll attribute that to the fact that there is a wireless version of the previous model, and it looks like they're using just slightly modified shells between the two. In fact, you can see a slight indentation where the wireless version of the keyboard would have a nook that you would use to store the wireless dongle. Also, there's a very slight difference in the way that these keys are spaced, with the Rogue keyboard having just a little bit more room between each one, and that allows the LEDs to shine through a bit more. Also, the added brightness could be attributed to the fact that it uses a fixed color pattern, and as such, seems to be using more LEDs, whereas the previous model looks to only have three LEDs, or at least three zones of LEDs. And finally, there's the fact that the Rogue keyboard is a whole heck of a lot more legible when the LEDs are turned off which is great news for people that want a 60% keyboard but don't really care about LED effects and also aren't the best touch typers. Also, one kind of silly fact I noticed is the fact that this LED pattern is practically identical to the LED pattern used on the Booga one-handed LED gaming keyboard from Five Below, which is hands down my favorite piece of that collection. Pun kind of intended. 
which is strengthening my desire to get a 60% keyboard into that store, even if it is just membrane. Also, for everyone commenting about how they need more keys for typing than this keyboard allows, I believe I mentioned it in the review of this keyboard that you're not supposed to use that by itself. It is meant to be a supplementary keyboard that you can use to put your hands in more of a comfortable position while gaming. Also, since I posted that review, I have been playing around with some 60% keyboards alongside one of my other half keyboards. And I've got to say, I kind of like using them in tandem as if I had a split keyboard, which is great because split keyboards are so freaking expensive. The cheapest one I have found is like 100 bucks for a membrane keyboard. This combo was 25. And funnily enough, I have found both models of 60% membrane keyboard that I have reviewed so far on wholesale sites for about the same amount as these half keyboards and the other items in the Booga collection. So it is definitely possible for Five Below to carry 60% gaming keyboards. Whether or not they put the Booga branding on them is up to them though. I mean, heck, maybe the Rogue logo did indeed add a little bit on top, if you know what I mean. Tell me down in the comments how much you would love to see Five Below get a 60% keyboard, whether or not it's mechanical. Though, they have had 15 to 25 dollar items in the past and they could totally get a proper mechanical keyboard into their stores in that price range. So let me know if you'd like to see that as well. The more I see comments about both of those, the more I'll know people have made it this far in the video. Okay, all joking aside, I definitely think this is a great grab for 15 dollars. Yes, this is not a mechanical keyboard, but I've not been seeing 60 percent versions of those for less than like 25 dollars. Instead, this is a nice low cost option to try out the 60% profile to see if it's for you. I know a lot of gaming keyboard enthusiasts are all about that in-game board, but you gotta have some love for the tutorial level. Also, I am definitely looking forward to more rogue gaming gear from Kraken Keyboards. I'm hoping they actually go through with making the gaming mouse, mouse pad, and headset to go with this thing and maybe even their own one-handed gaming keyboard. Hopefully all of those are going to be in the $15 or less price range. Now I think I've said pretty much everything I need to say about this keyboard and then some. So until next time, this is your guy Cly signing off.